Red is the color of speed, passion, random chance, and chaos. And Ragavan, nimble pilferer, really exemplifies all of these virtues. But he wasn't always this way. Once upon a time, he was merely a pet. The good luck charm that the pirate captain Kari Zev kept on her shoulder. And what's worse, he was only around to do her dirty work. Once it was done, he was cast off, exiled, doomed to sit upon her shoulder. But Ragavan had dreams. Yes, he was a monkey, but he was a smart monkey, nimble, quick, and he had untapped leadership potential. Well, now that potential is going to be realized. Captaincy of a skyship? A job so easy that a monkey could do it. And now, a monkey will do it. Welcome to the Uncommon Commander. Hi everybody, and thanks for tuning in to another Deck Tech. My name is Ryan, and I'm very proud to present to you the first of several Modern Horizons 2 Deck Techs that I'll be doing on this channel. The commander today is going to be Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer, and this monkey means business. This legendary monkey pirate has a 2-1 body and costs a single red mana to cast, if you're casting it for its normal value. But it also has the dash ability, which is an alternate casting cost. When it's cast for its dash cost of a red and a generic mana, it gains haste, and you return Ragavan to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. He also has the ability that reads, Whenever Ragavan Nimble Pilferer deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token and exile the top card of that player's library. Until end of turn, you may cast that card. Thanks to this ability, Ragavan is mostly being used as a theft commander. No matter how I try to be different here, that won't change, as it's in Ragavan's nature to steal trinkets from our opponents. That said, I did not try to load this deck up with theft effects. We have two others in the entire deck, mainly as redundancies. Instead, I'm building Ragavan around his dash ability. The idea here is to have good things happen when Ragavan or our other dash creatures enter or exit the battlefield. I've also built in a little bit of a lands matter suite, which will let us use our mountains as a resource. This deck did get a little pricey compared to most decks I build on this channel, as Ragavan costs over $60 on the day that I'm writing this script, so I went with a budget of $150 that excludes our commander. I was able to find this deck minus our commander for $148.84 if buying it from TCG Player. And if you are, please consider using my affiliate link found in the video description. You can also support me at my small Patreon page, also linked in the video description. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to tap that like button. If you're new here, I'd be honored to also have you subscribe. Now, on to the deck tech. To begin today's 99, we're going to both ramp and thin our library by searching for land cards. The ramp comes from Wayfarer's Bobble, Arcane Signet, Prismatic Lens, Burnished Heart, Skyclave Relic, Scare Tiller, Solemn Simulacrum, Tempting Contract, and Brass's Bounty which has a nice synergy with all of our land searching. You'll also note that most of this ramp allows us to create mana of any color. I've done this on purpose, since the cards that Ragavan exiles must be cast for their normal mana costs. Our deck thinning cards are going to be Expedition Map, Armillary Sphere, Mycosynth Wellspring, Thaumatic Compass, which actually will ramp us once we finish a turn with 7 lands by becoming Spiders of Araska, and Wildfield Scarecrow. Regavan itself is a card advantage engine, so you may be forgiven for not including as much card draw as you normally would. I, however, will be including just as much as always, and maybe a little more. On your screen are cards that draw spells. Those are Mask of Memory, Tectonic Reformation, which turns our extra lands in our hand into card draw, Tome of Legends, Treasure Map, whose backside is the land Treasure Cove, which lets us sacrifice a treasure in order to draw a card, and of course our Impulse Draw spells. Rhea's Apprentice, Light Up the Stage, Valakut Exploration, and the Wheel spells, Wheel of Misfortune, and Reforge the Soul. So you may have noticed that this deck doesn't fly out of the gates as fast as it could due to its middling amount of ramp spells, but it sustains extremely well through the middle and late game thanks to lots and lots of card advantage. We'll see even more card draw spells in a couple of other sections too. We need to get Regavan through for combat damage if we want him to give us a 5 finger discount. So we're packing a lot of evasion, making him quite nimble. 
These are 9 of our evasion spells, and again, there may be a little more in other sections as well. Our pure evasion spells are Fire Fright Mage, Key to the City, Prowler's Helm, Trailblazer's Boots, Wings of Hubris, and Whisper Silk Cloak. We also have Retreat to Valakut, which targets just a single blocker as a landfall trigger and makes it so that that creature can't block. And we have Goblin Smuggler and Sibira Tulzidi Caravaner to grant evasion specifically to Ragavan, though these will also work with a few of our other cards too. Subira, you may have noticed, is also a card draw engine. The best part of magic is drawing cards after all. Okay, we've got Ragavan up and running. Now let's look at our other dash creatures. In this deck, we will want to be using these for their dash cost most of the time, because we do want them to come in and trigger our ETBs over and over again. So dashing right out of the gates, we have Lightning Berserker, Mardu Scout, Colgan Forerunners, or is it Colahan? I'm not really sure how to say that. Goblin Helicutter, Vault Breaker, Warbringer, Flame Rush Rider, and Sprinting Warbrute. As you can see, each of these is of varying size. Perhaps the best of the bunch is actually Warbringer, as it does reduce our dash costs. Another interesting one, though, is Flame Rush Rider. If it targets Regavan, the Legend Rule will destroy any token Regavans, so most of the time you'll want to target something other than Regavan with it. That said, our next set of cards will trigger from it anyway, so maybe doing that's not the worst thing in the world. And since I've mentioned them, here they are, our dash payoff cards. First we have the ETB damage spells, Impact Tremors, Terror of the Peaks, and Warstorm Surge. We then have the Leaves the Battlefield damage spell, Outpost Siege, which can instead be used as card advantage if needed, and finally one that doesn't do any direct damage, Confusion in the Ranks. Now, Confusion in the Ranks may seem like a bad idea here, and it probably is, but if we're casting our creatures using dash, they'll get exchanged for an opponent's creature, and then at the beginning of your end step, they'll leave the battlefield and return to your hand. Your opponent gets nothing, and you get their best creature. This is still a dangerous spell for you, of course, if you have other things on the field that you're afraid of losing. I would say use it only with wisdom and a good sense of timing. Now that I've shown you just about all of the triggered abilities in the deck, I'll show you a couple of cards that work great in synergy with them. First up is Strionic Resonator. This artifact costs 2 to cast, and 2 more to activate. When activated, it copies a triggered ability. This means that if you activate it in response to Ragavan hitting an opponent for combat damage, it'll make Ragavan's ability go off twice. Each time you activate it, it costs 2, but Ragavan will also make 2 treasures, effectively allowing you to exile 2 of an opponent's cards from the top of their library for free. The other card listed here is Hammer of Perforos. This one will give all of our stuff haste, including creatures we've stolen from opponents with confusion in the ranks. It'll also let us use extra mountains to create golems. This isn't usually too relevant, but it can be useful if you have Scare Tiller on the battlefield, or if you're just a few life points away from a win and have a Warstorm Surge in play. Don't underestimate the damage that a few surprise 3-3 golems with haste can do, even at the cost of lands. We are now into our removal section, and normally I show you spot removal and then board wipes, but today I'm going to do that backwards, because board wipes are a big part of our plan of attack. Our sweepers are Starstorm, Fiery Cannonade, Cosmotronic Wave, Hour of Devastation, and Blasphemous Act. These are here to remove your opponent's blockers from the equation. If we can render our own evasion cards superfluous, then these sweepers will have done their job. And since that is their job, that actually makes Cosmotronic Wave, the spell that deals a single damage to each creature our opponents control, our best one, because now our opponents' creatures can't block this turn. I also have a special place in my heart for Hour of Devastation. I've got a friend that plays Abyss and Angel of Hope 90% of the time, and this is a great card to lead the turn off with against him. Our spot removal cards are going to be mostly creature and artifact removal. These are Abraid, Comet Storm, Shattering Pulse, and Smashing Success. You may also note that Smashing Success can remove a land. Helping with that are Cleansing Wildfighter and Geomancer's Gambit. These latter two can also be used to help ramp us if we have an indestructible land to target. To target any permanent, we have Chaos Orb, and to target any spell at all, we have the red counter spell, Tybalt's Trickery. Okay, we're on to our land cards. First up, we have the Indestructible Lands, Cascading Cataracts, and Darksteel Citadel the first of which can help with casting things that Ragavan exiles. 
For additional color fixing, we have Exotic Orchard, Spire of Industry, and Thespian Stage. To give added evasion for our creatures, we have Access Tunnel and Rogue's Passage. For finding Scare Tiller, we have Inventor's Fair. As a bonus, Scare Tiller can actually bring Inventor's Fair back from the graveyard. Additional utility lands include Gaia Reach Sanitarium, Handware Battlements, Haunted Fengraf, Scavenger Grounds, and our most expensive land by far, Valakut the Molten Pinnacle. For ramping, we have Myriad Landscape and Terrain Generator. And finally, our basic lands are 19 mountains. Alright you thieving baboons, you've made it through 95 cards in the deck and that leaves a final 5 cards to be shown in a final segment, which is called the final the <clears throat> a card that isn't card draw, but is card advantage for us, and is the third theft card in this deck, is our number 5 card, Stolen Strategy. This thing is actually even more powerful than Regavan, as it exiles each opponent's library's top card. It then lets you spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. I guess this one doesn't let you abuse Regavan so much as it lets you ignore him. And that's its own pretty powerful utility. If we're looking for a card to double Ragavan's triggers, Strionic Resonator is good enough. But if we also want to double up our activated abilities or create tokens of things like Terror of the Peaks, we need our number 4 card. Its name is Lithoform Engine, and it does all of these things as a one-stop doubling shop. It's not super fancy, it's not even super explosive, it's just boring, effective, and doubles our value, like any good company on the stock market. At number 3 we have a card that lets us double all of our ETB triggers for free. In a way. This card is Genesis Chamber. When a non-token creature enters the battlefield, its owner creates a 1-1 mirror artifact creature token. So this is symmetrical, and that's its real cost. Other than that, we'll be doubling all of our impact tremors every time we dash, and we'll be creating an army of chump blockers beside it. Not too shabby for a 2 mana $1 artifact. Our number 2 card sees what Genesis Chamber did, and says, hold my beer and watch this. This card costs 6 mana, is a red enchantment, and is a fan favorite of gamblers. It's Mirror March, and every time we dash, we're going to flip coins. When we win, we create a token of our dashing creature. This gets absolutely crazy when you cast Flame Rush Rider with Terror of the Peaks in play. You shouldn't probably need a calculator for this one, but you will need some multiplication skills, and maybe a few of your fingers. Finally, we're on to our number one card. It's a card that was also featured in our last video's final countdown. Do you want to guess what it was? <clears throat> it's Morog, Fury of Akum. So this one doesn't exactly double our triggers, but it does give us some extra combats as a landfall trigger. This means that Regavan will be able to attack an extra time, deal extra combat damage each time, and get his trigger to go off an extra time. But why stop it? One extra combat. With Scare Tiller in play, we can empty our graveyard and hand of land cards by simply attacking over and over again. Every time we attack, a land comes into play. And every time a land comes into play, we attack. Let's combine it with Hammer of Perforos and even more bonus points if Balakut is in play. You probably just killed somebody off of that, and that's why Morog is the number one card in this deck. This deck usually just monkeys around, but now it's got Minotaur power. Alright you fellow thieving monkeys, I want to take this next 10 seconds to thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you were just passing through, please consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to me, and I'll keep posting more videos in this style for you to watch. The next video is going to feature another Modern Horizons 2 commander, so if you're interested in those commanders, be sure to tune in. Thanks everybody, bye!